Life Stories Live. Go through it with Jesus. The best decision I ever made was to invite Jesus into my life. He's my best friend. He has never left me. I can testify that God is good and faithful and that he has a good plan and purpose for your life. Just trust him and follow his direction. And uh, I'm just going to end on this. At, at Melbourne University in 1980, I was looking for, for the truth and purpose and meaning in life. And I found the truth. And that truth is a person. And that person is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's how I want to finish. You need to find the truth. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Charles. Wow, what a wonderful story. And I think you've been through so much. But like you said to people, don't go through this life on your own. And that's one thing you experienced. You didn't go through all you've gone through on your own. You had someone with you all, this, all the way. Every step of the way, you've had someone with you. Jesus has been with you. And I want to encourage you to, today, when you give your life to Jesus, he never promised it was going to be easy, an easy life. He never said everything's that's going right. to be perfect and simple and beautiful. But, you know, the thing is, it, it doesn't promise a smooth passage, but he promises a safe landing. That's the wonderful thing. And so tonight, I want to give you an opportunity to have a relationship with, with the same Jesus that Charles knows, the one who's been with him through all his adversity and helped him to overcome all these adversities. Tonight, you can know the same Jesus. What do you have to do? Well, the Bible says we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not one. And Jesus came and died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and my sins. He shed his precious blood to wash our sins away. And all we have to do is repent. I mean, turn away from our sins and invite him to come into our heart and life. And when we do that, he will give you the free gift of eternal life. And he will be with you. Whatever you go through, he will be with you all the time. He, will, he said, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you always through every situation. I want to invite you to ask Jesus into your life right now. I want you to pray a prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you now. I confess that I am a sinner because the Bible says we have all sinned. We have yes. all come short of the glory of God. Yes. And that includes me. Yes. But I believe, Jesus, that you yes. died on the cross yes. in my place, in my taking place. the punishment for my sins, you and you poured out your precious blood to wash my sins away. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. I turn to you with all my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my life right now by your spirit and give to me the free gift of eternal life. Yes. I receive you now. Thank you for coming into my life. Now I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus yes. is the Son of God, yes. that Jesus Christ is Lord, Yes. And that God has raised him from the dead. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me, for yes. making me a child of God. Yes. And I know now that whatever I go through, you are going to be there with me. And I look forward to that day when you will come again and take me to be with you forever. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you pray that prayer, please let us know. Contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the Salvation Prayer link. You'll also find the Bible app, which will help you and encourage you. I'm going to hand over to George now. I believe he has some questions for Charles. Thank you, George. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Charles. What a story. 
You sound like the bionic man. You've had so many operations. <laughs> <laughs> we can rebuild well, him. <laughs> yeah. now, you said at the very beginning, you, you were born in Ohio, of course, in, in the United States, growing up um, up to nine years of age. Um, and you said you were, you were a bit afraid because you saw these things on telly, Martin Luther being shot and yes. um, Robert Kennedy. Why do you think you were so afraid at, at that age? Oh, the, the, uh, it, it just seems so real. And, and uh, to actually see the, uh, the gunshot in my uh, grandmother's hand, you know, mm -hmm. in, during the uh, bakery robbery, you know, everything was just so real. And every night, the uh, Vietnam War news and, uh, you know, the, the riots in, 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 in the streets and uh, the National Guard coming to our... Uh, city it was just one event after another yeah mm -hmm. so it was just you know i mean you you know i mean i you'd go to night during those riots and, you, and mm -hmm. you'd, you'd see the smoke of the burning buildings and you know it was just it was it was like uh yeah a little touch of war you know so yeah i was very fearful as a, a an eight nine year old I mean, you even mentioned that, of course, that your, your parents' bakery was a victim of the riots. Now, is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Obviously, that, just, was, that, uh, was that a major factor in there, the fact that they moved to Australia? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and look, the, uh, the, uh, the whole city was in economic decline, Akron. You know, mm -hmm. it's like an industrial city, tire manufacturing. And uh, for three months a year, it was under snow. You know, it was just a... Uh, it was tough going. It was tough going. So uh, there were all these, you know, so, so my dad was pretty insightful uh, mm -hmm. 50 plus years ago because, you know, I mean, everyone thought of Australia as being a land of uh, kangaroos, you know, jumping down <laughs> the street. Yeah. Snakes, yeah. And spiders. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was, you know, we, we never had the internet or technology yeah. to, you know, to, to know what other places were really like. And yeah. How do you think your parents coped with all this? I mean, were they, were they, would, um, were they church people or did they have a... a yeah, 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 they were actually. I, I, I should have mentioned that. Uh, I, I really appreciated my uh, Sunday school upbringing. You know, I mean, that was... Uh, I, I had some wonderful Sunday school teachers and uh, I really enjoyed uh, going to church, mm -hmm. you know, and, and learning about... Uh, Jesus and uh, the people at the church were, were, were always uh, so good and so kind. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think we would have got through, you know, uh, as a family, you know, with, w without our uh, Christian uh, roots and upbringings and relationship. Yeah. Well, you important. gathered all your belongings together, your family, and you moved to Australia at the age of nine. Yeah. How big a culture shock was that for you moving from America? Well, look, look the culture shock was that uh, we, we were up in Sydney for two years. Like, I, I'd never seen a, a, a beach. Uh, I'd never wow. swam in the ocean, you know, and, and uh, we, we, every, uh, every weekend we would... Uh, <laughs>
life stories. Uh, go to one of those magnificent beaches in, in Sydney and mm-hmm. basically swam all, all the way up till May and, you know, from, yeah, you know, nine months of the year in the ocean. It was just unbelievable. You know, I mean, it was like paradise. And, uh, look, we, sh- we, we should have bought a uh, beach front block of land at Palm Beach for uh, $30,000, you know. It was, everything was so cheap. <laughs> well, yeah, just like yeah. the beach behind me here, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just That's like that. That's the beach where I was baptized in Ireland, actually. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, so, look, it was, it was a really easy time back then to mm-hmm. to make a new start we basically came up with nothing and within a few years you know my dad was able to earn enough to have a house and yeah it was it was just just a wonderful time of opportunity yeah amen and so you passing. went to australia you settled in you went to high school you said you love sports yeah and you tried out the aussie rules a mixture of gaelic football and rugby how did you get on with that Oh look! Look, I was I was very good at sport actually, mm-hmm. and uh, was very good at Australian rules football, and uh, also I was very good at table tennis. So uh, wow! My younger brother Robert was actually a uh, Australian champion table tennis player and represented Australia overseas. You know, so uh, sport was a uh, very important part of my life, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, it it always gave me some uh, some self-worth and you know esteem and yeah you know I always felt good when I achieved something through sport did you, you know, ever but, think you would have of course a career in, less, did you ever think you would have a career in sport well that I, I did think I had was going to have a career in sport and I, <laughs> I can remember sort of almost getting upset with God for giving me these small hands but mm-hmm. he knew that my cr- career was going to be in dentistry you know and <laughs> gave me these perfect hands Small as a game for, for else. <laughs> yeah. and, and look, and, and really, I, I should have lost the uh, left hand in that uh, bakery uh, wrapping machine wow. as a six year old. You know, like my dad really thought that, you know, I, I was going to lose my hand. You know, it was that wrapped up in the machine. Wow. Yeah. So uh, there you go. You know, I mean, I, look, all through my life, I can just see. God's had it all planned out and you know I mean he's made me uniquely and for a unique purpose and you know he, he's I just know he, he's cared about me in such an intimate and caring fashion and uh, I find that amazing because he's doing that to eight billion people all at the mm-hmm. same time because that's he, he has that intimate knowledge of eight billion of us all at the same time in that care you know it's you know how, how do you work that all out george you don't <laughs> you said of course yeah. you believe that god had a plan for you did you ever yes. imagine that plan would include the illnesses and the sickness that you've gone through oh oh no 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 it, it, as i said uh months before i was diagnosed with the non-hodgkin's lymphoma i thought i'd be working till I was 65 as a dentist and I never have any sick days it it was funny I I thought cancer and sickness and you know were for other people not for me but I've realized that uh, all of us are going to have our fair share of difficulties and traumas and and issues they're just different issues yeah but uh but we're all going to get our fair share of difficult circumstances. Yeah. Well, well, having listened to your story and all that you told us about your, your cancer, and your kidneys and all that kind of stuff, have you ever at any stage say, why me, Lord? What, what did I ever do? Have you ever asked God that question? Or even no, 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 definitely not, because I've just seen God's provision and blessing through it all. And mm-hmm. I, I, I could give you story after story of God's goodness and uh, how he's really provided for me and how he's really blessed me, you know, even to the extent where the specialist, the best man in my area 
who has looked after me over 50 or 60 times in the hospital, lives two doors away. You know what I mean? And, and I sort of, I could ask God, why have you been so good to me, God? Why have you provided that? You know, that there he is two doors away. You, you would not believe how good God's been to me. And, uh, and uh, look, we have to expect difficulties and, and problems here on earth. Yeah. This is not heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, heaven's where you don't have problems and worries and, and, and difficult situations. Okay. Yeah. Well, there, there was one good thing so you definitely it, thought about, thought about was when you, were, you saw your wife for the first time on the bus. Tell, uh, us, yeah, a bit, yeah. tell us a little bit how that came about, how you got to meet her. I know it's it is um oh, oh look look I I I, I can't believe it you know because that beautiful lady mm-hmm. went to the same church I, I you know God told me to mm-hmm. sort of go to it was just unbelievable you know it's like God God had it all worked out and God you know and I just look I'll tell you what I I had to be obedient, you know, like it's, it's important that you're obedient to God and you do what he tells you to do Mm -hmm. and then he can work it all out, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's my advice. I I was obedient and it just happened that she was at the same youth group there at the uh, Collins Street Baptist church. And that's of course where we got married, you know, a couple of years later. And it's, it's just a beautiful beautiful story and uh, again god's goodness and god's provision cool. yeah because uh you know we talk about the two most important the, the most important decisions you make in life and that's one is your you know what you do with the jesus question who is jesus and uh you know i mean that and the second most important decision you make in life is um your wife you know who you're going to marry you yeah. know? And, and look if you get both those things right which I did, uh, you know, Amen. it, it made life now, so course, much better. And was a traumatic time, of course, for you when you're going through the the treatment and the diagnosis and everything. On several occasions, you said you were, you were told, prepare for death, okay? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. How, how yeah. do you prepare for death, if you can? Well, look, I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it was a bit like when I was in the uh, Royal Melbourne Hospital for... Uh, that, that six weeks stay, I, I read through the whole uh, Bible, and that helps you prepare for mm-hmm. for for life and death. Yeah, so uh, that, that that's that'd be one suggestion. Uh, you know, get closer to your uh, in your relationship with 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 God, with with Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, you know, and and just ask god for help and direction and and you get that through uh through through reading the bible that the 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 bible is is such a wonderful manual for 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 life such a wonderful manual for life there was also a few other traumatic uh, moments in your life when your your daughter stephanie fell over of course uh, that you lost her you got through that as well and especially when you found out about your brother when he was murdered yes how did you yes. actually feel at that time? Oh, uh, look, look, I, I just felt felt so uh, sad for my brother, and uh, I just wish I would have known about the uh, the double life, and I would have been able to help him. Uh, and and but it, it also made me realize the only thing we have in this life is our relationship with with God that's what we take with us mm-hmm. and uh you know I, I just really hope that uh my brother Herman mm-hmm. uh ha- had that relationship because he, he went to church but I, I just you know but I just hope he had that relationship and that he cried out to Jesus mm-hmm. because he he would have known he, he <laughs>
Life Stories. You know, just before he was murdered, that, you know, he was getting, you know, he was dying. So, I, I you know, I mean, I, that, that was, that's my desire that he, he was right with God, you know, just before he died. You know, but it, yeah, it was, it was, a, it's, and, and look, the scars and the pain still there. You yeah. know, it was, it's, 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 it's a horrible situation, but uh, all of us have to go through situations like this, you know. And you also yeah. mentioned your brother, brother Robert, who was very helpful to you, of course. Oh, yeah, and, and yeah. he still is. He's, he's been a wonderful brother. He's, he's down in Hobart, and he's, he's been a great brother. And, and uh, you know, he's, he was thrilled to be able to be a match and uh, mm-hmm. help me out, you know, because I had so many family. They'd do anything for you, you know, and the family and friends and, you know, that look, they're all part of the cancer journey. You know, your family, your friends, they, they did so much for me, you know, and, you know, they were so good to me and praying for me and helping me and, and the doctors and the hospitals and they're so good to me, so good. Got the very best. I got the very in, best. In the midst of all this, of course, you had a dental practice. <laughs> you were, yeah, were, I know. And I, and I not look, look, you, you gotta you gotta learn early on mm-hmm. you, you gotta just put these things into god's hands it's, it's your dental practice god and you look after it and he did you know? <laughs> so i love i love what you said promise little but deliver more how did you do that right. in your dental practice how did you manage to do that practically well because i, I was you know like if let's say if i did a bad job or made a mistake or, you know, filling fell out, you know, I'd replace it at no charge. I'd be, you know, very happy to go the extra mile. You know, you know, if someone was in great need, I wouldn't even necessarily charge them any money for their dentistry. You know, like, you know, I wasn't, look, I wasn't there to, uh, and, and actually the best form of advertising is your character and your personal integrity and word of mouth, you know, and, and, and that's how it worked. People just knew that they could trust me. I didn't find work. I didn't need to find any work in people's mouths because I <laughs> had a waiting list of months, you know what I mean? So, you know I mean? It wasn't the motivation. And, and, and it's good not being motivated by material possessions. You know, my motivations you know, pleasing the father, or, you know, in heaven, the, you know. In the dentistry, did you ever get the opportunity to uh, share the gospel with somebody sitting in the chair? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, like, <laughs> look, you had, you, you had plenty of opportunities to, to share your, uh, to share the gospel and your testimony, because uh, people tend to respect you because of your position, you know, as, mm-hmm. a, as a dentist and they're the patient. So, you know, there's many opportunities, you know, over the years. And, uh, you know, and I used to always play Christian music, you know, in the background and, okay. you know, you know, or advertise Christian events, you know, the surgery. So people knew who I was and had those weekly uh, men's prayer meetings at the dental surgery at night on a Monday night, you know, like it, it was what, yeah, saw some wonderful things and many, yeah. many people come to the Lord. Yeah. You also said a couple of years later your, your uh, kidney nearly failed, uh, but it didn't. But uh, how oh, was it? Sorry, uh, sorry, George. It was the liver. The liver. Oh, the liver. liver. Sorry. Yes, the liver. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how are things now? How's the quality of life now? Look, look, the the, the, uh, the quality of life's good, but I I, I still battle with um, pneumonia quite quite a mm-hmm. bit. The uh, the lungs are a bit of a weak link, you know, which is quite ironic because you know there I was a cross-country runner and ran marathons and my lungs were uh were, were probably 120 percent better than normal mm-hmm. and uh due to this graft first host disease almost overnight they went to 50 percent we went from 120 to 50 you know and I could I was struggling to uh walk up steps you know but uh but look uh you know we you know, I mean, I never thought 
1998 that I'd still be around in uh, 2022. And I've decided that, uh, you know, the the final years I do have here on this earth are the Lord's years. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a faithful servant. I'm going to finish strong for the Lord so that when I meet him in heaven, he's going to say, well done, Charles, good and faithful servant. So I'm, I'm, I'm determined to finish strong. And, uh, you know, if we can see a few more souls come into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Well, a few years yeah. ago, you weren't, you weren't told to prepare for that. You're still preparing, of course. <laughs> and you're yeah. still here with us. Um, and yes. speaking of plans, as you said, you just mentioned there you want to be strong. Any, any particular plans or anything you want to do in the future or like to do? Um, uh, look, look, uh, I... Uh, I'm enjoying my involvement, uh, you know, with the uh, Christian radio station because I see that as essential and crucial and very effective because it's reaching so many people. Yep. And uh, I- I'm also quite I- I- involved I- at a high level at uh, at my church mm-hmm. here, here in Geelong, which is quite large. So I feel God's put me in positions where I can sort of make a godly impact and influence you know for the kingdom so uh, but look i'm 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 always willing to help out kingdom work especially if it's leading to people coming to know the lord as uh their uh their savior and their eternal friend thank you charles well you've actually answered my my last my last question is always what's the best decision you've ever made but you've already told us The best decision you ever made was to follow Jesus. And the second one, of course, is choosing your wife. So it's been, yes. it's been fantastic speaking to you, Charles. Thank you so much for uh, letting us see your emotion and your, your endurance and your faith and your, and your trust in God. It's been fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing with us. And uh, with that, I'd just like to hand back to Alan. Thank you, George. Thank and you, again, George. thank you, Charles. Thank you so much for sharing tonight. It's been really, really interesting hearing you and I'm sure it'll encourage many people who are facing issues in life. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, George. Thank you, John. Can I invite you to join us next week, uh, 8 o'clock, again, on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube. Next week, we have a guest speaker from Wales, uh, Chris Aitey. Chris is a freelance writer. He also had issues in his life, health issues, including diabetes and Addison's disease. And at times he felt lonely, but he discovered God's fatherly love. And he'll be sharing that next Monday, 8 o'clock. If you do have any needs and, and prayer, then please contact us on our hotline, plus 44-794-355-0287. You can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you can find lots of information, including uh, an app that you can load, download on, on your phone. You can also watch uh, stories from previous Mondays, many, many wonderful stories that you can follow. So thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you again for all those who've been watching and listening. And I just pray you will know the peace of God which passes all human understanding and the joy of the Lord might fill your hearts. Good night, everybody. God bless you. Thank you.